Kia ora tātou, ko Titi Rangi te maunga, ko Waio Te Awa, ko Ngai Tamate Rangi, ngā te hene waiatarua me ngā te whaita ngā hapu, ko ngā te kahunganu, ngā rauru me ngā te raukawanga iwi, ko Rangi Ahua te marae, ko Meri Wai Paopao te tipuna, he kaipu tahi rangahau ahau, ko Kim Hamilton taku ingoa. Nau mai koutou katoa, welcome to all and thanks for joining us this morning. I'd like to acknowledge the community groups and NGOs throughout Aotearoa who are working really hard at the moment and also those from government agencies who are looking for some insight to inform your work. We'd like to acknowledge those who are joining us from other countries around the world and we acknowledge all of those impacted by COVID-19 and recognise that this is a time of great uncertainty and radical transformation of our people, our country and our world. The things that Dr. Dai and Matua Mark Kōpua have to share today are really relevant to how we can work through and recover through this rahui. And throughout the webinar, we invite you to post questions and engage in chat. I can pose these questions to Dr. Dai and Matua Mark, and you can also log into the Community Research Discussion Group Facebook page to post any questions that you may consider following this webinar. If you'd like to be notified of when we're broadcasting our next webinar, please join our Facebook page and the Community Research Discussion Group. You can also subscribe to our monthly e-news by emailing communications at communityresearch.org.nz. So in our webinar today, Ngāti Pro psychiatrist Dr. Diana Kōpua gives us an insight into the work of Te Kuruhuna in developing Mahia Atua, a Māori approach to well-being, which draws on the stories, narratives and healing practices of Te Ao Māori. The work of Te Kuruhuna in Tūranganui Akiwa has delivered significant health benefits for Fano and services in the region. It's an approach that encourages practitioners to actively engage in Māori interventions that draw from the Māori creation and custom stories known as Pūrāko to understand how tipuna understood and made sense of their realities. Mahia Atua is not just a set, set of techniques or a culturally sensitive therapy, it's drastically different in terms of the way it conceptualises the lived experience of Māori. It is a way of being and strengthen, strengthens our relationship with whakapapa, relationships with our own stories. The Pūrāko helps us to collectively design and operationalise Indigenous knowledge systems that improve all of community outcomes. So just a little bit of background about Dr Kōpua. So in the mid-1990s, Diana developed Mahia Atua, an Indigenous approach that responds to the ongoing issues regarding institutional racism and inequity for Māori within the New Zealand health services and society. The Mahia Atua approach has been utilised by multiple practitioners across various sectors within New Zealand, including art, health, education, justice and the social services sector. Diana, in collaboration with her husband, Mark Kōpua, are committed to indigenising their respective communities of practice and are pioneers in their field. Dr Dai's husband, Mark Kōpua, is Te Aitanga Hauiti, Ngāti Ira and Ngāti Parau from the east coast of the North Island. He is a tōhunga, tāmoko artist and has been tattooing for around 16 years. Prior to doing tāmoko, he did whakairo, uh, which is carving for about 35 years, and in Mahia Atua, he is a kaipurako and tells and weaves the stories of our tipuna and atua. Ka nui te mihiki a kōrua. I'd like to hand over to Matua Mark to lead our karakia mō te rā. Hei a koe, Mark. Oi, no, kia ora tātou, kia ora i tēnei ata, kia ora hoki koutou, uh, te hunga e whakarongo mai nei kia, kia, kia mātou e kōrero ana i wā mātou kōrero. Hoi no, kia whakatere ei tō, tō tātou kaupapa i tēnei ata, ka takitaki haere i tētahi o ngā karakia nā reira tēnā tātou. Tēnei te aroa rangi nui e tuake nei, tēnei te aroa papa tūanaku e takoto nei. Tēnei te aroa rangi rāo ko papa e takoto nei, kera rau te tapu wai o tānei ki raro, tēnei te pō nau mai te ao. Karanga tia te ao e piri, karanga tia ko tānei e piri e tata, whakamaua kia tīna, tīna, hui e tā e ki e. Tuana, kia ora tātou. Kia ora everyone. I guess I, I can do a quick explanation for our karakia. Our karakia is uh, uh, one that Actually, opens up. Wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, waiting. You all who are listening, it's so cool that you're here, but welcome to a show of how a husband and wife join the space together. I've already told him that he's leading and we lead with a whanaungatanga, right, Mark? All oh, right, okay then. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's normal practice, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. 
Okay then. So hey 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 tuku i tuku pepeha. Ko tiki rangi te maunga, ko au anu i aru a matu a te awa, e maha ngā marae o tēnā taki wā, i roto i te rohe, te pokapū o te rohe, te pito o te rohe o te aitanga hauiti, e maha anu hoki ngā hapū, ōku, ka whakawhiti atu hoki ki e tahi atu o ngā maunga, ko pua kato o te maunga, ko hiku wai te awa. Ko Ngāti Āwhia te hapū, ko Ngāti Ira te iwi. Ka rere atu huki te waka ki roto o te ākau o toka ānamu. Ka titiro ake i huki ki te maunga o Marotiri me te awa, te ngutu awa o mga hauini e tere ana. Ana ko te whānau rua taupare te hapū, ko te mehi nui anō huki ki te iwi nui o tērā takiwā o Ngāti Prau. Nā reira, ko mā kōpua tōku e ngoa. Uh, I tipu anoa, I grew up in Mangatuna, a little place just north of Tolaga Bay, in between Tolaga and Tokomaru Bay. And I grew up there and uh, uh, immersed in, te, in our reo. Uh, was raised by my grandparents there. And, um, and uh, I raised uh, four children and, uh, and I sh share four ch of Diana's children. And uh, together we have quite a collection of mokopuna. And for a very, very long time, my primary passion and uh, mahi has been mai toi Māori. Um, I have been, yes, a carver for a very long time. And uh, during that period of time, I carved seven meeting houses, uh, which was a lot for a young carver. And then, but also during that time, I got tired of that mahi and became a moko artist. Uh, which uh, was a little bit more than 16 years ago, <laughs> but uh, but that's uh, and I've been doing that and training training young younger folk and and older people in in the corridor, the Faka Papa and uh, the Hitori era corridor kato e pāna ki te moko. So uh, kanui tērā ko ko mako po to ko ingo. And tēnā nō tātou, ko hikurangi te maunga, ko waiapu te awa, ko Ngāti Parau te iwi, ko putānga te hapu, ko rāhui, ko putānga, ko henepare ngā marae, kei tigitigi, kei rangitukia, ko whetu matarau te maunga, ko awa tere te awa, ko henerupe, ko tūtua ngā marae o kawakawa mai tawhati, i reire noho ai tōku whānau rangihuna. Engari i tipu aki au i whānau au i Porirua, i raru i te maru o Ngāti Toa, nei rā ngā mihi mai o hā ki a rātou, ki a koutou. Kei tūranga māua ko māke noho ana. And yeah, that's me. I'm Dr. Dai and I'm really hopeful that this will be a helpful and hopeful wānanga, a little bit different because we like to interact with you. So please kia kaha to pātai mai to ask questions. No question is a dumb question. And just to lead into this type of wānanga, Mark and I are quite different. He's very comfortable in speaking Māori. I have a whole bunch of ngāgara in the back of my mind thinking, am I going to say it right? Am I going to pronounce it right? Can I think it without having to overthink it? and I think Māori and so we bring a different story about our Māori tanga but without a doubt we're both very passionate about it and we believe that our stories, our history have not been given the space that they deserve in many institutions and although I've literally grown up in mental health and addiction services, uh, Mark hasn't and so what I would like us to do is acknowledge all of you who are listening and the different reasons that you might be listening. So some of you are working with whānau in distress and you're wanting to use uh, meki narrative um, ways of working. Some of you are in distress and are wanting some help with that. And I hope that you are here. 
some of you are in distress and might not know that you're in distress. And what I mean by that is some of you as practitioners, whether it be in health, education, wherever in our society, are really busy trying to help our community, but actually we're not getting it right. So that means that we have a problem. And we as individuals make up teams and services that make up systems and our systems aren't working. So rather than focus the, our, our conversation with rhetoric that's unhelpful, using a discourse that's unhelpful, what we want to do is introduce you to a few pūrāko. And there'll be some of you who have attended our wānanga. And so these pūrāko will be, um, you'll think you know, but what do we say to them, Mark? If, I mean, how many times have we heard well, the same pūrāko? I think part of that is that a lot of, lot of our uh, whānau that, or mataora whānau that have been, been involved with Mahi Atua for, since we, we started rolling this out in Gisborne have, have uh, may continue to say that every time they hear uh, pūrāko that they've heard over the last four or five years on a regular basis, there's always something new that mm. drops out of the mm. out of the purakoologist uh, that uh, that re reignites them, that re sparks that that uh, kurahuna inside of them to uh, pity closer to that to that purako and understand it even deeper. So have a think about why you've tuned in today. And then try and expand and have a think about some of the problems that exist, whether it be in your personal life or your professional life. And let's start from there. Because many of us are taught that when we're in distress, that there's a set way that we have to manage things. And there's an expectation that we should be doing something in a certain way. But I'd like to challenge us to think that if we haven't got it right in the statistics, then how do we know what way works? And what I'd like us to think more of is how we develop systems. Systems to A, tolerate the uncertainty, like many of our atua, many of our ancestors had to do. But there were certain systems that are like tohu in the pūrāko. And so we thought we'd start with one that some of you may know and some of you may not. For those of you that do, I want you to pay attention to when the names of the atua that seem unfamiliar to you make you feel anxious. Pay attention to that because that's where you are right now. You're allowed to interrupt our wānanga and ask questions and ask us to repeat things. This is not an academic uh, space. This is where, I mean, it's called, a, it's a community research discussion. And from my lens, N equals one, and that is you. So everyone that we're talking to, we want you to be the researcher of you by absorbing these pūrāko and paying attention to what you're noticing as you're listening. Kapai, And so, Mark, if you could start from our pūrāko no tatapu, and then we'll break it down. All right. So most of us are familiar with the fact that, um, that uh, Ranginui and Papa Tuanuku were husband and wife, and... Uh, existed together they fell deeply in love and so so deeply in love that they decided to make a promise and commit to never ever let either of the other go and uh, so this love was so intense that they that they wouldn't uh, release their embrace upon each other and intense it was because it, it produced a lot of children and some people say there's 70 children i find that very hard to believe i do know that it's possible that there were 70 of just Rangi and Papa's children. The problem with this was that the space in between Rangi and Papa was, uh, became more and more restricted. 
as more and more children came about. And uh, in our in our ill, the phrase that describes the the circumstance is called is goes inoho tatapu ngātua. Now inoho tatapu means that they existed in a state of ex, uh, of uh, restriction. Noho, noho is to exist. Tata is in a very close, tight space. Pu is in a cluster. But when you break those the, the last two words down, tata pu, you, what you get out of that word is the origin of the word tapu. And so as opposed to uh, understanding that tapu is a word for sacred, that it is a word for holy, uh, all those religious connotations, what in actual fact, when the, when this where this word came from, it means restriction. And so for, to, to, to delve it, we'll go into that later because it, it, there's a lot of times in our, the use of the word tapu, that it, it truly does describe restriction. So, inoho tatapu nga atua, and they, and they lived in the state of restriction for a very, very long time. And uh, basically they just put up with it. Uh, it, because uh, the, the state of restriction was cold, it was dark, it was wet, it was so uncomfortable. It was, uh, it was confining, it was like a jail sentence for these children. It wasn't a, a love story, it was a jail sentence for them. Until at one time, one of these Atua, who goes by the name of Ke Kerewe, I'll say that name again, Ke Kerewe, decided that he'd had enough. And so he made this big announcement. I've had it up to here with, it, with the state of restriction that we're, we're in. I'm over it. I don't want it anymore. And the closest sibling to Kekele Wai that heard, heard Kekele Wai make this statement was called Toro Iwaho. Again, I'll say the name, Toro Iwaho. And Toro Iwaho is, could be described as an atua of networking because Toro Iwaho took what Kekerewai had to say and, and put it out there. I Toro Iwaho nga kōrero. So he put that, that, uh, that, that feeling of, of Kekerewai, of, of uh, hoha, of, of, of just over it, and spread it amongst all, all the, the other siblings. So this conversation started to rotate and circle amongst them until it got to the ears of one of the older uh, siblings who is the God of darkness and the God of fear. So you can imagine that the God of darkness and the God of fear is quite happy in the state of existence that, that they, they, they're in. And his name was Fido, sometimes known as Fido Te Tipua. So Fido heard this conversation and it had arrived to his ears and immediately Fedor started to say, oh, we don't have to be talking about this. We're fine the way things are. I'm happy the way, way things are going. You just have to get comfortable and settle into this. So, so just turn the, turn the volume down on, your, on, this, uh, on this corridor. Well, not everybody held the same opinion as Fedor. There were a number that did, but of course there were others that didn't. And there were some neutral ones as well. And as that quarter rotated and rotated and circulated amongst them, all of a sudden over in the dark, because it was in the darkness, in the darkness there, one of the other siblings, and his name is Uepoto. Uepoto noted this, this tiny little speckle of light that in all the blackness, all the darkness, it stood out to him. And this tiny little speckle of light was so magnetizing that it just drew all of his attention to itself. Now, this speckle of light, we understand now, was, it was called the hinātore. So the hinātore is now a word that we use to, to describe potential. Kwerate hinātore o tēnā tangata, that's that person's potential. Kwerate hinātore, that is the potential. And so the hinātore is a phosphorine glow, and it was the very, very first form of light that our atua experienced. Now, this phosphorine glow also has a source, and the source of that is called a mokohuruhuru. 
Now the Moko Huru Huru is a name for the glow worm. So this is where this first phosphorine light came from, from the Moko Huru Huru. So Uepoto, who was the first one to spot it, was amazed by this tiny little speckle of light and so he elbowed the Atua, his sibling next to him, whose name was Temamaru. And Temamaru says to Uepoto, yes, I've, I've actually been looking at that myself. I thought I was the only one that could see it. And so then they turned and, and whoever the Atua was, which happened to be next to them, Peketua. And so the, they, they said to Peketua, can you see that light? And Peketua was like dumbstruck. He saw this light and he was absolutely magnetized to it, hypnotized to it. And so these three decided that they wanted to go and inspect and, and investigate more about this tiny little speckle of light. And in the background of all that other discussion circulating where Fido was telling them to be turi turi, be quiet, he now noticed, Fido Titipua now noticed these three who were paying some attention to this tiny little speckle of light, the Hinatore. And so he bellowed out to them and he said, hey, 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 you follow us. You come back over here. This is where the conversation is. You don't need to pay any attention to anything else but this conversation over here. But these three, they were so fixed on this magnetizing Hinatore that they paid no attention at all to Fido's booming, bellowing, and scary voice. They just continued to focus on this little speckle of light and move more towards it ever so slowly. And so now Fido had to turn up the volume in his threatening voice and he says to them, if you fellows are not going to pay any attention to me, I'm going to curse you. Ka fiwa ko koto kitumakutu, kyokumakutu. And so he, he they, they, they didn't even heed his warning. They continued to push towards this light. And then he decided that he would throw his first makutu out onto them. And the first one was thrown at Uetonga. And the makutu that was thrown to him, we've all inherited it and it's called goosebumps or kiri ongonga. And he threw this makutu at, at uh, Uepoto and now, forevermore, whenever we experience the, the atua of fear, our body, rea our body, body reaction is kiriomonga. We, we get goosebumps. Whenever we experience the coldness of uh, breaking away from, from the warmth, our body's experience will be kiriomonga. So we've inherited that thanks to Fido and, and Uepoto. Regardless, it's only Kiriomonga, Uepoto and them kept pushing forward. So now he had to turn the volume up and what, what he did now, Fido, was he reached out to grab a hold of Temamaru and all he could grab of Temamaru's was his hair. And he went to yank him back and when he yanked Temamaru back, he pulled all his hair out. And from that day forth, we have experienced premature baldness. Aroha mai, kia ora, Mark. Um, we've had a pātai from Jason asking you to call it on my ano mote makutu a uepoto. Oh, the makutu a uepoto, that makutu is that we've in, all inherited, is called a goosebumps. Kiri onga onga. It's a goosebumps, and so so whenever we experience anything to do with fiddle, when you when we're pushed out into a scary space, into a, into a space of fear, we experience goosebumps. Uh, when we're pushed out into the cold, away from from the security and the warmth of the collective, we will experience goosebumps. So that's that's the uh, that's the first curse. Kiri ongonga. So we went. We went to the premature baldness uh, that we that males all experience now because uh, Fido, when he went to uh, attack or pull back uh, Te Mamaru, he ripped only his hair out, and now now we males experience the premature baldness. But still, it's only premature baldness, uh, premature baldness. So they kept moving towards the Hinatore. As you can tell, this Hinatore has got a huge pull. And uh, so now Fido decided, right, it's time to pull a weapon out. So he pulled his, his patu out 
and he went to strike at Pekatur, the third one of them. He struck at Pekatur, and Pekatur hit the dust, and then he scuttled and hid away underneath the rocks and he hid away in the dust. And he became the origin and uh, the starting point of all centipedes. So the centipedes, Pekatu is known as, as the origin and the source of all centipedes. Uh, and, and so, but still, regardless of, of what was happening to them because of Fido wanting to control the situation, they kept pushing towards this Hinatore. And in the meantime, of course, all the other, other Atua had, had ceased talking because this had become more of a bit, a bit of a priority. It became the, the event that, that people were watching. And Tane, our hero, Tane Mahuta, Tane Nuyarangi, Tane Matua was watching what was going on. And as he, he watched and he could see that, that Fido, his attempts to control these three were unsuccessful. Fido then made a statement that he would now turn and focus his, his control over the light and extinguish this tiny little speckle of light. And it was at that point that Tane stepped in front of him in between that destination, the Hinatore and Fido, and said to, said to Fido, as far as I understand, brother, the only way that you can extinguish that tiny little speckle of light is to flooded in absolute light, in daylight. Yes, question. Uh, kia ora, kia ora Mark. Um, we've got a couple of, uh, well, we've got a comment about um, the place of Mahia Atua in terms of support and rec and strengthening a system and kaupapa, but we've actually also got another partai from Gervin Youthline and talking about the feeling of anxiety or concern um, around all the unfamiliar names is being able to remember these stories to pass them on well. <laughs> and then the other part I is uh, obviously they can hear the stories again and again because we're recording the webinar and it will be available in the next day or so. But they're wondering as a Pākehā, do they have a right or place to be a carrier of these stories? Kia ora. Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, look, I looked at both of those questions and I think that the best place to start is um, to acknowledge that for a long time, our stories have not been allowed space. And so as, as easy it is, as it is for us to be able to draw a stick figure, you know, circle up the top for the head and then a line for the back, for the trunk, like we all learnt, that's like second nature to us. But we never learnt to draw a manaya. So it takes practice. And children do that. They practice without having to worry about what it looks like. So social judgment really gets in the way of us being able to, uh, there's a lot to do with social judgment that gets in the way of us growing. But the best way to do that is as a collective. If I use this story to help us think about this question, and for both questions actually, because even if you want to put it in a, speed, uh, in a sports arena and you want to develop in any of the systems that you work in, I have to challenge you first to say, where are you in Noho Tatapu? And so Noho Tatapu is in Noho Tatapu Nga Atua at that time. It went from a story of love, but the context changed. There were more children. And so the key is that change is not something that you do to change and then you are there. Change is the very thing that we have to be able to tolerate all the time. So as you hear new things, are you able to expand your mind so that you have space for all these new terms to fit in. And what are your systems that you set up to allow you to fail? Like you have to be error prone here. Like you're gonna make lots and lots of errors. And so first of all, you need to be able to set up an environment that supports that. And many of our systems don't support that. Many of our systems are about performing, right? Not practice. Like, well, they call us practitioners. 
but we're not practicing, we're performing. And we are not asking the people real time whether what I just did was effective. Like right now, was Mark's storytelling effective? Will you be too shy to let him know that mm, wrong, wrong mode, I needed pictures, uh, your tone was too deep, you were too slow, um, or are you going to say, no, I want more, I wanted you to go deeper. Like we've set up, we're in a society that's so PC that we are not able to talk honestly to each other to give that performance feedback so that we can forever practice. So what are your systems that you'll set up so that you can remember these names? Because it's a little bit like um, these unprecedented times. I don't know how many of you were using the word unprecedented before, but we know it now because it's been mentioned so many times. How will you do that? In terms of a system and setting it up in a sports arena, uh, if you don't know of Dr. Ihi Heke, then you need to. And I see that you referred to Atua Tanga. Um, he's called it a few things, but Atua Matua, Atua Tanga. That is something that Dr. Ihi talks about. And there's some stuff online that you can look at to see how he sets it up. But Mahi Atua, and I think the point of difference for us is to look at, at us and what we do that contributes to the problem. <sighs> so let's look at these characters in Noho Tatapu. Yes. So, so our one suggestion from attendees has been that we allow Mark to finish his kōrero. His oh, that was code. finished. Oh, it was. Okay. Cause <laughs> they, they're worried that we're interrupting. And I think oh. part of maybe what attendees don't understand today is that, you know, I guess the wānanga style that, that we were keen in the ongoing interaction. So do you want to just explain that a little bit, Di, please? Oh, Mark? Oh, I, I think one of the questions that, that stimulated thought from me was about uh, whether it was okay for non-Māori to be, to be holders of this kōrero. And for me in general, there is, but I tell you what, just the other day I was looking through some, some writings of, of non-Māori that scribed, that they were scribes way in, in their, the early, early settlement days and research days and so forth. And, and I noticed that, they, that for me, I think is, it was upsetting because for me, they had twisted the whakapapa. Uh, the whakapapa that they had had placed humans at, at the forefront of, of all birthing. The Tane descent and the creation of Hine Ahuone and who was the first child born from the coupling of Hine Ahuone and Tane Matu or Tane as we know him. And it had put in there that Hine Titama was the very first child, which is in fact not quite correct because the very first child was Hine Manuhiri, the very first human born from that coupling was Hine Titama. And that wasn't even her name at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the things that I'm pointing out here is that it's okay to share, hold, the, hold these kōrero, these whakapapa, but don't twist it and distort it uh, so that it becomes then misleading. And if I can add, there's a, um, a quote from Werner Myers and in our mahi, on our Mahiatua page, I put up Anne Milne's beautiful kōrero um, and it's available on YouTube, but one of his slides was talking about the fact that there's no shortcut to doing our work. And Werner Meyer says that there's not enough white people who have done their work. The work of seeing the barriers of true meritocracy, the work of putting themselves in the shoes, and it says for black people, but I would go so far as to say indigenous people, to learn more about their experiences and perceptions the work of understanding how being white has shaped their worldview and self-perceptions, and the work of gaining the skills of deciphering and managing cross-racial and cultural dynamics. That's a lot of work, but without it, you can't create fundamental change in your sphere of influence. So if I go back to this Purako, what we're trying to do here is, well, first of all, Mahiatua is about indigenizing our space with our pūrāko so that our psychology has concepts 
to inform the way we're thinking. And if we can have concepts through our purako, then it stops us from having to use this rhetoric, this discourse, like in my profession, in mental health and addictions. We actually don't think we need to challenge the terms schizophrenia or bipolar or anxiety disorder yeah, yeah. or depressive disorder. We, we don't, we, we're trying to challenge what we should do about those things as opposed to challenge where that knowledge system came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we're wanting to flood the space with a purako and then get you to think about what the issues are. So for Parker, it will be, can I share these stories? But it's not actually about sharing them in your space as a practitioner. It's about you thinking about how come you don't know this story? In the context of New Zealand history, what do you need to do to think about this story and what character you are? Yes. <laughs> Um, we've had a little bit of a, a, a chat uh, backlash here saying um, people really want to hear more of your purako and they're a little bit um, hoha about this, you know, about this, I guess, this session responding to a tawiwi uh, partai and about, you know, they're worried that this Māori space is being kind of, you know, I guess, colonised a little bit Over by in. that whakaro. Yeah, well, so mm. I'm just kind of, um, you know, assessing this. So in particular... People are really keen to hear the story about why Tane stepped up to challenge Piro. So I just wonder, well, kaya, kaya kōrua, I, think, I think one of the things here is at the beginning of this of this of this Puraka or Noho Tatapu, uh, there was uh, discomfort in what they in their existence, and so a discussion that that uh, came out of that was about what to do about their discomfort. And, and the initial uh, option given to them was, was given to them by two matawanga who said, I'll kill the parents. And so that was a bit too much. So there was already this discussion going on about what, should we do something? Should we not do something? Should, should we watch, if we're going to do something, what will we do? And it was quite a big discussion. And in the meantime, the Hina Tore appeared and and these other three were distracted or pulled to, toward the Hinatore, and that became another story within this bigger story. A lot of the times, there are tiny little micro purako that are inside the bigger, the bigger story. And, and what eventuated were a whole lot of early battles. Yep. And what I love about what's happening on the chat is that that's what's happening here. There's an expectation that Mark hasn't finished, or there's there are different ways that different people are responding to our problem. Which character are you in this Pūrāko? So actually what we were going to do was get Mark to finish right there, which is when Tāne said to Fido, in order for you to extinguish your fear of that light, you need to flood it with more light. But there were about eight or nine characters. And what I noticed, particularly in mental health, is that we want to jump to the solution and we want more and more knowledge, more and more purako. Lots of people ask for it, but we've just given one, but we haven't even delved into the different mumu, the different characters. Kikirewai was someone who would identify the problem. They're brave and courageous. They speak up in spaces where it's not okay to speak up, it's not PC. Are you that character? And if you are that character, have you reached out to Torui Waho? Do you have a Torui Waho? Do you value the person that spreads the word? Or do you get brassed off that they broke your they breached your confidence? Are you Tane who watches from a distance the whole scenario pan out? Are you the curious one, or more to the point, do you want to be the curious one? Are you fiddle resisting change? And I know that many of us say what we want to be, but if I was to change the context to home as opposed to working in your job or change the context to the past or the future, can you shape shift into those different characters and see it from different perspectives?
which one are you? Mm. Like yeah, I, I, I think because sometimes I can tell the story from the perspective of um, of Toro Iwaho. You can just change the whole the whole way that the story is by telling it through the eyes of Toro Iwaho, as opposed to as opposed to an audience watching all of them unfold in their different characters. If I go into character, I can be fetal, or I can go into character and and become Whipple. And, and that gives you a different uh, that gives you a whole nother story. And one of the Atua very early on in the early battles, following that debate between Tane and Fido, was Tangaro. And Tangaro yeah. initially was in the house of Tutia Niwaniwa. And so that house housed the thought that didn't want to change, wanted it the way they wanted it, had an expectation. But actually, when Tangaro watched Tane's movements, he started shifting and started thinking, no, I think, I think this change is necessary and went to the house of Huaki Pauri. And even those two are concepts, two houses of thought. Tu te aniwa niwa, Huaki Pauri. Fido, the protector of the sacred realm, because comfort zones is like a sacred realm. Or Fido, the instigator of the creating barriers that are gonna stop us from being able to explore. Uepoto, can you shape shift into Uepoto and just sit and tolerate the uncertainty? Like these, these dynamics are real time. They're happening right now here. They happen in our families. I see, that, I see that Tina Wilkins has just said her boss is fetal. <laughs> maybe you're fetal, Tina. Maybe, maybe we can explore what makes her fetal? Like, can you use the uepoto? Or is it too far gone? And so you end up being two fetals in the same space. I'm glad it's Tina, because then I can pick on you. That these are the stories that we want to explore. Kim. Sorry, guys. Yeah, we've got an anonymous attendee, and I know you were open to having anonymous questions. So the part I is, why aren't we using evidence to address racism rather than religious stories, it seems that adding in metaphors muddies the water rather than identifying and modifying ah. racist practice. I quite like that. Can I, Mark? Mm. You know, some people would say that psychiatry is a myth. The, our mental health and addiction system is founded on it. And if I look at the d definition of religion, it's almost like religiously practicing something. And what I like about that as opposed to which denomination you support. What I like about that is that there's an assumption perhaps behind that question that says that what we're talking about are myths. And that's something that Mark and I don't agree with. So that's about having, and I'm not sure, but that's about accepting that you don't agree that what we believe is true. I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay about is our society founded on these beliefs that are myths to us. And when I look at what we believe, there is inequity in our systems, health, justice, education, you name it. But if we're going to address the inequity for Māori, then we have to look at what happened in the context of New Zealand history that stopped our knowledge from being able to breathe now. And so when you come into my room in distress, it's not that I will flood what I believe onto you. In fact, for me, a Māori approach is one that values your cultural identity, who you are. It's about listening to what you want, right? There are two separate things that you're asking us to do because evidence is actually used. It's, if you look at psychiatry, the methodology has, not, has been flawed and is not valid and is not reliable and is definitely not generalizable. 
Yeah, I, I mean, uh, for me, that's like I've just come through Easter. Which 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 mythical past did that come from? But it's a good point about evidence. But we need to build the evidence. And if I was to say that this is a hypothesis, that using our Pudako can help change our systems, and we've seen it in three different services we've established, is that evidence for you? Because what we had is a reduced number of people in coercive care. We had less, we had less diagnoses. We had less people using medication. We have, we have more people self-referring. We have more whānau attending. And we have more people getting meaningful results. And what we do know from the evidence is that in New Zealand Health Quality and Safety Commission looked at those people who suicided that were already in services that were supposedly meant to be carrying out evidence-based practices. And what we know is those people who suicided had been seen in their service a week prior to their death. And in the exploration of the data, it showed that they had very high levels of risk assessments, which are evidence-based, but very little meaningful outcome from the meetings. So we've got Buster C who's wondering about, because I think some of this is about control and, you know, um, I guess dominant discourse, but more than that, it's more entrenched. So the question from Buster C is wondering about the concepts of control which emerged from the Mahia Atu recorded or that you gave Mark and, um, and this, I guess struggle and the corridor in terms of being a, pra a Māori practitioner in therapy and mental health. So mm. do you just want to talk a little bit about that perhaps? Kia ora kōrua. Uh, really briefly, Mark, I think that what we've acknowledged is that there are different characters. Fido mm. was very controlling. Uepoto was curious but didn't go alone. Went with te mamaru and also piketua. You had mum and dad who were in love. And we know, well, sorry for those that don't know, that the mum and dad were separated. There's a story about that separation and needing to create space. And I wonder if you share a little bit more of that story, Mark. Well, we my, goodness, time. my goodness, that sounded like, like my neighbours when I lived down in Tonga Bay. That description. <laughs> so what am I sharing, sorry? I have no idea what you're saying right now. You'll have no, because you described a, a couple that were in love with children that, you know, they could be children that, that were curious and, and, and play, someone that was wanting to be in charge of everybody. And I was saying that that sounded a lot like a neighbour of mine in Togumaru Bay. Oh, I'm just reading someone that's saying they're having trouble hearing me, but um, I'm trying really hard not to talk too loud. <laughs> And now I'm not loud enough, but um, apologies for that. Um, what, I, what I would like, though, is for us to realize, if I can just talk about systems, because I was listening to the therapist, and what we know is in order to address control, we have to acknowledge that individuality breeds invisible processes. And as therapists, you're often expected to see someone, and you are seeing them as an individual. Whereas Mahiatua would promote you working in pairs and having a Modi in the room, not that you're co facilitating and listening to the story of the Fano and distress, but for you to be able to observe the facilitator and their performance and give real time feedback about things that you see. So we have to set these scenarios up where we are being honest with each other, because the reality is if you were singing a duet, and your mate was hitting the bum notes and you were about to go and do um, a huge performance to a big audience, you would need to give feedback. And we're not doing that to each other. So setting up the systems, whether it be from the front door at the triage or picking up the phone, when we're talking to people who are wanting to refer in, what are the words I'm using? What's the tone like? So we're actually having to address all of the processes that we use in a system. And we use this pūrāko because we're stuck. 
and we all have opinions and we all have characteristics. So what we need to do is acknowledge we all have them. There's a fuck up. All of you know we fuck a papa to all of those emotions, all of those characteristics. But how do we create space to keep that space open so we can explore it more and tolerate uncertainty and not be so blimmin' um, certain? You know, we're working with certitude like we know what should happen. But our statistics are telling us that we don't. And, right? Go, Mark. And I need to, to, to let people know that in many of our puraka, Tane, who was the hero, was really only the hero because he failed many, many times, but he never, ever gave up. Keep going. That's where I wanted you to go. Keep going. And so one of the, th the stories when they separated, eventually it ended up being separating mum and dad. But during that whole process of separating, like, first of all, Tane tried to use uh, the mingi mingi. Now, I don't know if you know what a mingi mingi looks like, but it's not a very, very strong tree. He tried to use harakeke to separate Rangi and Papa. That's just not going to work. So he failed multiple times. One of his attempts in, in order to do that with a, with a keke, well, not with a keke, but is with a, is, oh, with the keke. And hence, we have keke that, that actually tried to go, grow now in the trees as opposed to growing on the ground. And it was part of that, his attempts to separate Rangi and Papa, but it only got as far as those trees. Eventually, Tane was successful because he then turned to use the mighty Totara, the children of Mumu um, uh, and, and uh, all those those large trees to do the job. So, so don't don't lose your place. But Hui, I just read your comment about how you get tongue tied, tongue tied. <laughs> I just got tongue tied. Um, but Hui, this is it. You as Tane trying to explain to your boss failed because you get tongue tied. But so the Tane. This is about being error prone. So if you know that you get tongue tied, what are the systems you need to set up? Do you need to be like Uepoto and take a te mamaru and a peketua with you or come with a pre-scripted statement or say to your boss, you know, when I try to explain to you, I get tongue tied and there is so much and it's so important to me. And in this space, it's not working for me. Like make the problem your systems, not yours. It's not you. If this space was totally indigenous and our way was promoted, you wouldn't be tongue-tied. You'd be speaking Māori and it would flourish. Go back to the history and the reasons by you're not the problem. We know that. Set up your systems. Tāne failed. Carry on, Mark. So as Tāne went to uh, separate these, these parents and Eventually, once he, once he got his shoulders on the ground and his feet pressed up against dad's chest and he started to push, but then he ran into another problem, which was mum and dad wouldn't let each other go. So here's the part where he used a critical mass, where he used help, as opposed to doing this all by himself. He then called on his younger brother, Paya Tarangi, to go and, and get two tools uh, that they could use to help cut and sever uh, Rangi and Papa's hold upon each other apart, which he did. And born out of that are the two ads is known as Te Whiro Nui and, uh, and uh, Te Awhi Orangi. Uh, and eventually, of course, because of those two ads, they were able to separate the hold that Rangi Nui and Papa Tunuku had upon each other. And, uh, and he, Tane, was able to pull and press and push them apart and elevate Rangi Nui up to the space that he's, that he's in now. The only problem that he then had was every time he went to take his feet away and have a rest, Rangi Nui just kept coming back down and falling back down with his, with his weight. And so he decided that he needed to have something to fill that space, to hold that space apart, to hold it open. And he knew that it would come in the form of winds and he needed four of them. Hence, we get the four winds, Ngaho Efa. And, but he also knew that Tafiri Matea, his brother, the god of winds, didn't support him. Absolutely not. And so he decided that he would go and find a cousin of theirs, and her name was Huru Te Arani, 
and she was actually their brother and uh, sister-in-law because she married their brother Tehorani, and don't bother too much about the names, and ask her because she was a god of winds herself, mm. and ask her for four children or four winds in in her care. And so Payatarani again went to her and asked her for 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 help that his brother needed help to put place winds in between Ranginui and Papatunuku to keep Ranginui elevated. And so uh, Huru Te Arangi, sympathetic towards their, their circumstances, uh, whangai her four, four of her children, and those children were called uh, Tokohuru Rangi, Tokohuru Nuku, Tokohuru Mawake, and Tokohuru Atea. Four, uh, two, two male winds and two female winds and they were placed at strategic spots once Tane lifted their father up. Uh, these four winds were placed at strategic spots and then he took his feet away and forevermore from that day forward, Rangi Nui was kept elevated. And that's how we get the Rangi Tuhaha, that, that now the, 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 the skies have been separated. Kanu Yes, Kim. I, that I know I'm trying to balance uh, no, the engagement good. of Wānanga with uh, allowing space for the Pūrāko, which people are clearly really hungry for. I'm also mindful that we're scheduled to wrap up in a few minutes, but we've got a question here from Hataraina Mataira saying, Takapātai, oh. kei te noho tatapuia, it's uncomfortable, it's collective, it's observable from two very distinct and specific mana. So what do we learn from that and how can we use that and what does Fano need to do? Well, if I try and link that, I might not be able to successfully, but with what Lynn was wanting a little bit more of is why there is such disregard to our evidence, to our knowledge. Mm -hmm. And my evidence um, in regard to why our our stories are not myth is because I can fuck a papa from Rangi and Papa down through to my father, to me. And so that tells me that's my evidence. Um, and there was someone else that said, why is our feedback not evidence enough? And it is, but we haven't set our systems up to support that. And it should be practice-based evidence. And I think that the disregard is because of, well, we, it, I saw the poster for this. It was treatment for racism with a question mark. And we can get all academic about it, but the reality is that if our knowledge system matters, then we need to create space for us to understand that knowledge. Knowledge is not understanding. Knowing these pūrākos is not enough. We need to understand them. And what I would say is in our mahi atua wānanga is that we value everyone's opinion and we try and wānanga what does this mean in regard to what people should do while they're sitting in noho tatapu, like observe, look at these characters. There are eight of them. Kere wai. Do you feel that stirring? Do you even pay attention to the stirring? Do you ignore it? Do you suppress it? Why do you do those things? To get curious about yourself. Be the uepoto about the hina tore within you and know that New Zealand history has stopped us as a collective from believing in ourselves. And there are many of us that are fighting to say that we're enough but there's still that inkling because we grew up in a colonized society. We grew up and were educated through a Western paradigm that promoted white spaces, white knowledge. And if you really want to change that, don't just fill your kete with the tools. That's another story of fetal wanting to grab the baskets of knowledge. In fact, Tane went on a journey and your journey needs systems that should be collective, if you look online now, which clearly you can all do if you're on the Zoom, there are so many indigenous opportunities right now. Look at the Oro Atua, look at Ricky Solomon. We talk about there being problems within ourselves, within our own motivation, within at a biological level, at the hypothalamus. But actually, have you ever considered that the maramataka is having an impact on you? Have you ever considered that the environment is impacting you? One of the things Mark said last night is that Rangi and Papa and Tangaro and all the elements are very happy right now. Yes, human beings are not, 
but we're so human centric that we're focused on ourselves and how to help each other. But what good are we if our environment is dying and it was screaming out to us and we were not as a collective paying attention. The Purako and Reriata talks about this. We've got to watch the language we use, get back into the Purako, explore the different characters. So for you who've listened in the last hour, like re-watch the story, write it down, write it in Māori, write it in Pākehā, explore telling the story from those different characters. Be Pekitua, tell this whole story again from Pekitua's perspective. Think about who the Pekituas are in your Fano, in your workplace, and just observe. See if you can shape shift and learn from that observation. We have many stories, Fano. We've got many stories, and that's what people want is more and more stories, more and more Purako. We have them. And just to go back to Lynn's question, community learning is um, is this is gatekeeping of where we go to get knowledge so that we can help our communities. And one of the things that Mark and I are very aware of, although we've had evidence in Te Kuwatuata in Gisborne and Te Hiringa Matu in Gisborne, and now we have just started Te Kuwatuata Ki Hauraki in Teams and just squashed a wait list within two weeks, we have evidence, but no one, no one with those big pockets of money has come to us to help us grow and expand what we're doing here. So thank you, Kim. We really appreciate that. We'll keep doing it because we're Kopeka Kite Kopapa. For those that don't know of Kopeka, he he was a bit of a sacrifice in this creating space. And we're just gonna forge opportunities to create space. And I guess we'd like to wananga more with you, but we might be running out of time. Yeah, and I think because we've had uh, I see Katarana Pipi is wanting to know when is the next Mahia to Wananga. Well, I know that we uh, we have this uh, the one that's online uh, every Wednesday from twelve o'clock to two o'clock. So uh, until we can get get our social distancing, at the moment it's like the gap between my teeth. That's the distance we have to keep uh, away from one another. Uh, until we overcome the social distancing, we have to use things like Zui. So, kia ora tato. Kia ora. Um, well, have you got any final comments, Di? I mean, um, I'm absolutely, uh, yeah, I'm just blown away by the support uh, uh, and the engagement today. I, yeah. have, I have one, and it's just, just so that people are, um, are aware that, that our atua are our environment and are ourselves. Uh, when we talk about uh, fiddle, we're talking about that innate, that innate need for, within ourselves to be in control, to be an expert, to 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 uh, all all those sorts of characters. When we talk about uepoto, the atua Māori about about uh, curiosity, that's a characteristic within ourselves. And we're talking also about uh, our our environment. Tangaroa is uh, the god of the sea. Ranginui is, the, is not just Ranginui is not just the sky. It's also the mind. Oh. So, so uh, it's 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 external. You just want to get more and, into Purako. Eh? Yeah. No, okay. I'll, I'll stop right now. Final Kim's comment gonna, is what Kim wanted. Oh. Uh, mine bear, are, bear that mine, in mind. Mine are, and this is um, something I'm really pushing for, is that when we're in distress and we are in distress, right? We not patients and we're trying to help them. We are in trouble. We're in a crisis. We were in a crisis before COVID-19. My issue I have is that once we're in crisis, many of the gateways of opportunity for change while you're in crisis are leading into mainstream systems with mainstream yes. thinking. And what we've done during COVID-19 is opened a floodgate of opportunities where indigenous people are sharing what they know. And I love it. Like, what what better way to connect with who we truly are than being in Wananga with each other? And that's what we've been saying before COVID-19 and no money comes our way. And when I say our, I don't just mean mahiatua. Imagine, imagine what we could do, a little bit like Uepoto, Te Māmaru and Pekitua, 
if we went that way anyway. So really at a personal level, if you're in distress and you have a 12 year old in distress, have a think about without having to share all of that distress about connecting up with some of these indigenous ways of knowing online and contextualize it to your problem. Mm. See if you can think about the master within, if you do it that way, rather than reaching out so soon, because we know that the outcomes in our systems are not good. And I don't think that they're letting go of the power, the reins to make change. Look at the rollout of a whole lot of mental health resources. It's white stream. I'm going to get in trouble for saying that. Now it's all recorded forever. Um, I, 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 yeah, again, I'm speechless. It's been absolutely amazing. And the quality of engagement really from our viewers today has just been incredible as well. And I'm really sorry that we haven't had the chance to answer everybody's questions um, and, and to run this one over for a day because it seems like we could just about do that. Um, mm. Yeah, I, 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 I do have a little script here really just to um, remind people to jump onto the Community Research uh, Facebook discussion group to um, ask your questions that haven't been answered or if you think you have some other part-time for um, Mark and Di and they'll get on hopefully in the next couple of days. Um, I'd just like to thank you all um, and a, a book for attending and a huge thank you um, to our business behind the scenes crew and also to you, Dr. Dai Matuma, um, for, your, for your sharing today. It's been um, certainly relevant and useful at this time for so many whanau and um, yeah, if you'd like to join up with Community Research Facebook discussion group, do a Google, jump on, we'll admit you. Um, most people get approval. Uh, and uh, yeah, I know too that uh, Mark and I do run Wānanga, or they have went in at Wānanga, so are you still accepting registrations on your Facebook for those? Absolutely. We're still trying to go live on Facebook, but that seems to be a problem. But 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. every Wednesday for a little while, care of Te Korowai Haora Ki Hauraki. Shall we finish with a karakia? Kaira. Kia The Community Research website offers a hub for good community research and researchers. It's the place for the public to find and share evidence about effective community practices. The website collects research and evidence and organises these so that they can be easily accessed and used by other groups. You can access this research and browse by category, by a list of quick link topics or by searching for something specific. All of the research is free to download. The Community Research site is all about excellence and effective practices. You can view recordings of past webinars and find out about future ones. The webinars share evidence about what's working in the community sector. Published by Community Research in 2007, the Code of Practice provides the standards and guidelines for doing research. It's the place to start if you're thinking of undertaking research with or in a community or iwi. As well as the collection of research, we keep a register of experienced researchers who are skilled at working with iwi and communities. To find a researcher who can help you, we have a filter system which allows you to find people based on location, qualification, ethnic group and area of expertise. The Community Research website is a unique resource for the community sector to use and share. It matters because communities who learn well will do well. It matters because it evidences what's working for us. For researchers and community people alike, we've made it as easy as possible to share your research on our website. Kowa e whakama. Uploading material is quick and simple. Save your work as a PDF and head over to Share Research. Answer a few questions that help us tag and organize the research so it's easy for people to find. If you're a researcher and skilled at working with communities, you can add your details to the directory of researchers so that you can be found. Community research keeps you updated and informed. This helps make you more effective.
If you want to stay updated about the latest research, informed about new resources and our upcoming webinars, head over to sign up for our e-news on the homepage. Community research is a rich resource built for and by the community. For it to reach maximum potential, we rely on you to contribute, participate and support the resource to grow and thrive. Mā te kotahitanga e ora ai tātou.